Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mama's Time Out, where real moms come to talk. I'm glad to have you listening, and I hope you enjoy the show today. Once again, for new listeners, I'm Patty, owner of LittleBitesNews.com, MamasTimeOut.com, Gift Party Supplies and More.com, and WAHBusinessDirectory.com, where we offer shopping, child development, parenting resources, and low-cost advertising, party supplies, gift ideas, and more, along with our social network and life support call-in show for moms. I'm also a former elementary teacher turned stay-at-home, work-at-home mom, and mom of two young boys. Today, I am talking to Christina Wiley about ways to be you and be an irresistible woman. Christina Wiley is a certified human behavior consultant and leadership training speaker, as well as a health and motivational coach. Christina owns an irresistiblewoman.com, where she offers coaching, support, seminars, and workshops to help women in business and in life achieve their goals and dreams, while also taking time for themselves and others around them. Once again, uh, this is a live call-in show, so the call-in number is 646-595-4516. If you'd like to give us a call and um, get an opportunity to speak with our guests later in the show, and um, we're here bi-weekly now on Sundays at 2.30 Mountain, 5.30 Eastern. Or you can always join the live chat here for free if you log in with your account. If you can't join us live, you can always listen to the replays here and at mamachimeout.com. So if you decide to call in today, I will open the mic and chat up to talk or ask questions towards the end of the show. So feel free to chime in when you are ready with your introduction and questions or thoughts. And again, the live call-in number is 646-595-4516. And I apologize for uh, having to cancel out on our last show, but we've been having a lot of uh, issues going on with our house and getting some home restoration done now. So it was uh, quite a quite a headache and nightmare, to say the least. But I uh, also blogged about it a little bit at littlebitesnews.blogspot.com on my blog. If you're interested in learning more about our little crisis going on, which we're hoping to be out of soon. So um, looking forward to having that behind us. It's definitely been a learning experience. And once again, Mama's Time Out is a live support call-in show for moms of all ages and stages featuring guest speakers, experts, and interviews. If you're a work-at-home mom, you can talk about what that's like for you. And also, um, you know, you can call in and, of course, join our guests and ask your questions related to our show topics. Um, All moms are welcome, grandmas, all ages and all stages. So please call in at 646-595-4516. And I want to... Get ready to introduce our special guest. I believe she is here. And Christina is an aspiring, motivating, and fun coach who's down to earth, straightforward, and open communication style makes her a favorite with women in North America. Christina is a certified human behavior consultant and leadership training specialist, as previously mentioned. And she has conducted training for national sales organizations as well as local women's groups. She is passionate about helping women have a happier, more satisfied, and fulfilled life and power to be all that they truly were meant to be, an irresistible woman. Christina provides women with specific practical tips and tools they can use and implement right away to get immediate results as well as benefit from years to come. So I'm very uh, excited and looking forward to talking to Christina today, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to miss another show at no fun when that happens. So let me get her on the line and have her say hello. Hi, Christina. Hi, Patty. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, excellent. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, God. Living in chaos, but it's finally coming together. <laughs> oh, good. 
I know. And I'm hosting the show, though, for my sisters because, it, like I said, the house is in restoration mode now. So at least it's getting put back together. <laughs> Good. I, I can imagine that that must have been pretty difficult and stressful. When you told me oh, I got yeah. the email, when you uh-huh. told me all that had gone on, I thought, oh, poor Patty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been bad. It's been a stressful situation, especially with two little ones at home and you know, yeah. the baby's always pointing at all the holes in our walls in our house. Like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> He's like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, and I didn't <laughs> get to have any fun. I didn't get to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. He didn't get to have the fun of doing it, but now he's wondering what happened and who's going to fix it. But now he sees it's getting fixed, and I don't know. He looked a little worried, like, is our house falling down? Or <laughs> <laughs> So it was kind of nerve-wracking when my other son, he's three, or actually almost four, and um, he's just like, oh, they're going to fix my room, they're going to fix the holes. He's all excited now. Because <laughs> I just can't believe all the holes they had to make to redo plumbing, if anybody's been through that before. What a nightmare. Yeah, that that yeah. is pretty crazy. I know our um, our church flooded last year when it was raining uh-huh. really hard, and they uh-huh. had to do the same thing. They had to bend, poke a lot of holes and cut out the bottom of the sheetrock, and it was... I can't imagine, that's at church, at least I'm not there every day, but in your home? Yeah, wow. yeah, it was no fun. I mean, I wish we could have lived somewhere else during this, but it's yeah. kind of hard to do that. <laughs> you kind of have to be there, too, just to see what's going on. My husband's over there with him now. But, well, I'm just kind of glad to be away, I guess, and looking forward to it all being finished. <laughs> Yeah, now right now you're getting your mama's time out, huh? <laughs> right, right. So it's you know it's definitely been needed, and that's another reason I wanted to get back to the show desperately, and uh, take this time. And you know I've been looking forward to talking to you, and unfortunately I had missed my show um, last uh, last two weeks ago with yeah. uh, Diana Gintu, um, who will be coming back, unfortunately, but I have that's to get good. her rescheduled. Yeah, so. It's always a bummer when you have to reschedule. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, but you're here today. Yeah. <laughs> right. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about being you and being irresistible. I think this sounds like a great concept and something I'm sure lots of women, and including myself, need to work on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're on the right track, Patty. <laughs> I'm trying. It's not easy. I don't know. How, it's not easy to be irresistible. <laughs> That's that's for sure. There's there's moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. We all have those. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So I would like to learn from you and what you uh, have to say about um, becoming an irresistible woman, and start out by talking a little bit how you went from being a retired police officer to a coach for women and entrepreneurs who want to become irresistible women. Yeah, it, a little bit different career path, huh? <laughs> yeah, totally. But you know, it sounds interesting that you were even a police officer. So yeah, it, it was amazing. fun. <laughs> it, it was fun. It, it was stressful, but you know, it had its moments. But um, uh-huh. what happened? I was injured on the job. I uh-huh. developed physical problems, and I wasn't able to do it anymore. So they medically retired me at the age of 33. I became mm. a retired police officer. Uh-huh. So I could could have sat back and just told people, well, I'm retired. <laughs> but right. that was no fun, not exciting, uh-huh. not not living out any purpose or passion or anything like that. And so what right. I did is I started my own business, and I started in a different field. And uh-huh. it was going well, but it wasn't it wasn't truly satisfying to me. Uh-huh. And when I learned about the the coaching industry, something just clicked. And uh-huh. I was drawn to it, and I thought, you know what, this is what I'm meant to do because it encompasses everything I enjoy doing, which is uh-huh. speaking, training, empowering women, and making a difference. When you uh-huh. see a woman struggling in an area, and then even just sharing one tip, which hopefully the listeners today will even just walk away with one tip that can change their uh-huh. life and just give them confidence, there, right. there's nothing better than that. It's really rewarding. And I get right. to meet all kind of wonderful women like you. I wouldn't have met otherwise. Right, right. What's better than that? I met Patty. Right. Wow. <laughs> only one of a kind here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, that's for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, and I got to meet you, and I, I think it's great. So, I mean, it's too bad we can't meet in person, but maybe someday, <laughs> you know? Yeah, someday. You never know. 
Yeah, yep. so so um, that sounds like a pretty uh, neat way how you, you know, develop from be, being a police officer to a coach. And, I mean, I can understand why you would want to, you know, still be helping others and not just be retired and doing nothing, too. <laughs> so yeah, that's that boring. Makes, huh? Yeah, <laughs> kind of boring, I know. That's why I had to do something else besides just be a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> There's days where you get bored just talking baby talk and playing, you know, baby yeah. games. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and you know what? One thing I forgot to share, Patty, was that about a year ago I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Yeah. And that, that's just becoming, it's, I don't know, it just seems like it's, it's getting worse, a lot of women getting diagnosed. And the reason uh-huh. that I share that is maybe there's somebody listening who has some form of disability or mm-hmm. something, a health issue they're struggling with, like uh, like I, I have been, and mm-hmm. even the dis- I w- I'm basically disabled from my job because I can't be a police officer anymore. But mm-hmm. just to kind of maybe that would provide some hope that even if you can't do what you set out to do in life, mm-hmm. you can find another way to do it. Like what I would love to do is to travel around the world and mm-hmm. hold all- full day seminars. Mm-hmm. Physically, I'm not able to do that. I, mm. I can't stand on a stage an entire day, but mm. I found a way to still live out my passion, still make a difference, and still reach women. And the internet has just opened up so many doors. Even mm-hmm. the radio show, we couldn't right. have done this a few years ago. <laughs> I know it's great. I, yeah. I really enjoy doing this. I mean, it's you know it's a whole nother option for getting to know others and, you know, just the whole networking aspect of it and, and the uh, social aspect of it, because when you're a stay-at-home mom, you don't always get to talk with other women as much as you yeah. like. And so it's, uh, yeah, that's one of the things I really like about it. So, yeah, I, I agree. And uh, well, I was going to ask you, uh, as far as becoming an irresistible woman, what is the first step to take? The first step is to be yourself, and and that's what I call irresistible woman principle number one, be you. Mm-hmm. And because I think, you know, as we go through life and maybe we've been beat down or we've beat ourselves down, through through the situations and things that we go through, sometimes we can lose ourselves and mm-hmm. lose our confidence in who we are. And that's why mm-hmm. I truly believe that that is the first step, that is the foundation to being an irresistible woman is finding out who you are, kind of going through a discovery process with yourself, mm-hmm. uh, what your strengths are, and that's where your confidence comes from. Mm-hmm. And just embracing that and being bold, being confident, being proud of who you are as mm-hmm. a woman. And if you if you don't have that confidence, you cannot, it's impossible to be an irresistible woman. Confidence right. is attractive. Right. That makes sense. I know that, you know, when I feel down and out, I don't feel too pretty. <laughs> That's <No>. for sure. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, not even doing anything to myself for the day and, you know, staying in my pajamas and and that's it. You know, yeah. so definitely you have to have confidence, feel good about yourself and yeah. get out there and uh, feel, uh, feel like you mean something to the world. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so sounds like a great idea. I mean, a great way to uh, get started on being irresistible. And so um, in becoming irresistible and taking that first step to be you, how do you go about, you know, being yourself when you may not feel like you can? I mean, especially women who suffer, you know, postpartum depression, depression, you know, fibromyalgia and other, you know, elements that hold them back. I think that's when it... It, it really becomes a choice, and mm-hmm. and I teach children, and they they're starting to learn that from me that we always have a choice. Now that mm-hmm. I'm not saying we're not always going to be super excited, 100% gung ho, because mm-hmm. then we'd be perfect. <laughs> right, and, right. Well, we can't be perfect, but it, it it does start with a choice, and the choice begins when you say, okay, you know what? I want to be an irresistible woman. I want to be confident. And mm-hmm. the choice comes in, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to figure out what my strengths are. What are my passions? Because your passions come from your strengths, what you're good at, what you're naturally gifted or talented with. And some women mm-hmm. don't feel they have any strengths. But once right. they work with me, 
Do you realize, mm-hmm. wow, I had a woman say uh, just a couple of days ago, she said, wow, I'm stronger than I thought I was. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And that makes me feel good because she discovered that for herself. She became aware and empowered just mm-hmm. through this little process, which we'll we'll definitely talk about on the show. How mm-hmm. do I identify my strengths? Because that is where your confidence comes from. Right. And what are some of these qualities or characteristics that you consider to be strengths? Well, I start with what uh, the basis of it, the foundation of it, is the irresistible woman personality type. And there are four. It's based on the DISC model of human behavior. Sometimes people hear that and they go, whoa, too many big words. Yeah, so, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah sounds pretty technical. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's why I just keep it to irresistible woman personality type. And uh-huh. there are four, but all of us are a unique blend of those four. Generally, two or three are a little bit stronger in us. Uh-huh. And when we, uh-huh. the reason we break it down that way, because it's easier for you to identify what your strengths are. For example, uh-huh. the first irresistible woman personality type is uh, the determined doer. Uh-huh. And she's hardworking, she's determined, she's confident, she's bold, she's outspoken, uh, she's uh-huh. adventurous and brave and direct. And some uh-huh. of those words, someone might be hearing that and, you, and they might be thinking, oh, those are strengths. They mm-hmm. are. They really yeah, yeah. are. And and, yeah. that's, and and normally you might not think of someone being brave or direct, even in their mm-hmm. their speech being direct. You well, that's not a strength. Actually, that can be kind of annoying. <laughs> right, right. But when when you look at it, okay, that is a strength that person has because there are some women who can't be direct. They can't speak mm-hmm. up or be bold. Well, right. they can, but they just haven't been. Uh, they haven't really looked at themselves that way and been empowered and just someone there to support them. You can speak up, and it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad thing. Right. So that's, it's those how are some you do things. it probably, how you approach it, I suppose. Exactly. Because if yeah. you just go off and start screaming at somebody, <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. That's not said for work. me to be direct and bold. <laughs> right, right. You have to start yelling at people and telling them what to do <laughs> and how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that's the one one personality type. Those are her strengths. And then the other personality type. And like I said, we're we're a blend, but it's just mm-hmm. for easy ease of identification is to separate them. The second mm-hmm. one's the energetic influencer, and she is fun loving and friendly and joyful and optimistic, loving. She's an entertainer, and she just loves being around people. Mm-hmm. And those are strengths that she has. Mm-hmm. I know. I could use a few more of those strengths. I mean, yeah. I do love being around people, but sometimes I tend to fall back into the being too direct when I communicate, mm-hmm. and the person uh, the, the person listening doesn't receive that so well. But mm-hmm. If I could bring out these other strengths and soften it a little, like you said, <laughs> how mm-hmm. you say it's right. important. Right. Uh, so right. those are some strengths that the energetic influencer has. And then mm-hmm. there's the stable supporter. Now, Mm -hmm. she is still a people person, but she's quieter about it. Mm -hmm. She's Mm -hmm. helpful, loyal, supportive, dependable, and compassionate. She's a peacemaker. She likes everybody to get along, and Mm -hmm. she's patient. And those are strengths. And a lot of times, the the personality types that people typically view as being strong, Mm -hmm. they view this woman over here as being weak when she isn't. Mm -hmm. She just has a different set of strengths. Right. And then the last and the fourth irresistible woman personality type is the cautious contemplator. And mm-hmm. the cautious contemplator is also a little bit quieter compared to the, the first two we talked about. She mm-hmm. is reliable, very reliable on time, calculating, very detail-oriented and perceptive and conservative and inquisitive, likes mm-hmm. details, likes answers. And those mm-hmm. are strengths. And I think that when... Women take the time, like you, like you asked about earlier, how does a woman go about uh, being herself and being an irresistible woman when she may not feel mm-hmm. like she can? Right. But when she sits down and takes the time, so hopefully someone's taking notes, someone mm-hmm. like the listeners are taking notes on these different strengths, because mm-hmm. what you do is you sit down and look at these strengths. Okay, what strengths do I have? All right. These are strengths. They may not be things you previously looked at as strengths, 
But now you can, okay, I do have strengths. I do have a place where my confidence can come from. Right. Right. Oh, my gosh, when you mentioned all of those, I felt like, hmm, that's me. No, yeah, that's me. Well, that's me. <laughs> so I yeah. kind of feel like, oh, I, I do have a little, like you said, you kind of you blend into them, but trying mm-hmm. to find where your weaker spot is and building on one of your stronger areas. Exactly. So, yeah, that, that sounds like uh, something that I definitely need to work on <laughs> in a few areas. I'm just not sure. Uh, I guess it depends on the situation, which area you want to strengthen, too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, huh? Now to identify which actual strength you want you want to work on, I guess first. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. After you've looked at the strengths, Mm -hmm. then you look at them and say, okay, I do have strengths. I do have. I I can't. I can find confidence in these different areas. Now, what a woman does is she looks at those. I did, after mm-hmm. she's identified her strengths, then she embraces them. She's proud of them. And just mm-hmm. hold your head up high, realizing I am an irresistible woman based on these strengths. And then you can, uh, I'll say this, well, some women may need to write them down and put mm-hmm. them in front of them and read them every morning and every night. Mm-hmm. So you start your day on a positive note and you mm-hmm. end it on a, a uh, a good note, especially if you're not used to looking at these particular traits and characteristics and qualities as strengths. So that's mm-hmm. where the embracing them comes in, reminding yourself these are strengths, and I'm going to make take advantage of them. I have them for a reason. I'm to do something with them. So if you're mm-hmm. hardworking, you know, work hard. If you're mm-hmm. determined, use that for something good. Champion a cause, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. something for your family, for yourself. If you're right. A supporter. If you're not helping someone, you pro- you may feel like you're dying inside. So mm-hmm. find something, an organization, a group, something to get involved in so that you mm-hmm. can use your strengths. That's how you embrace them is you, you use them and you're proud of right. them. Right. And that way you can develop them and, you know, grow from that. So exactly, yeah. Sense. Yeah. So um, can... I think we kind of talked a little bit about it um, related to the strengths. If you are too direct, um, for example, can too much of a good thing be a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, and, and and it really can. Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, especially when we are talking about strengths that we have. And like you said, we did talk about it a little bit. When you're when you overuse your strengths, they become a weakness. Mm-hmm. So, so then you're then you're doing yourself harm. Then. So, like you said, the hard working. We'll just start with that one, and it's it's an example I use most often because it's it's easy to identify with and and understand. If you work hard because that's your mm-hmm. strength, but then you work hard all the time and never take a break, never take a mama's time out, mm-hmm. time for yourself to to renew, mm-hmm. replenish, and re-energize, then that mm-hmm. strength became a weakness because it's. It's not. It's not. You're not using it in a healthy way. Because basically, you're, you become a workaholic, and then all these other areas of your life will suffer. Right. So that's that's a good one. And the other example I like to use is um, being a giver. That can be a strength. And mm-hmm. giver and peacemaker kind of going together because you don't want anybody to suffer. You want everybody to get along. You don't want anybody to hurt. Now, when you overuse that, those strengths, uh-huh. you don't. I, I use an example of a time of a woman I know who has a daughter who is addicted to drugs. Uh-huh. And she's, of course, gotten into some legal problems, and the mom uh-huh. always bails her out. She pays her daughter's fine. Her daughter doesn't keep a job consistently. That's part of that kind of lifestyle. She pays uh-huh. her, and her daughter's older, mind you. She has a couple of children of her own. Uh-huh. So she's constantly bailing her out. Her daughter lives with her. The children live with her. Her daughter's mm-hmm. not learning the consequences of her actions. She's she, never yeah. her the mom does not allow her to learn from her mistakes. So that strength of being a giver and being a peacemaker, that's when it becomes a weakness because you're wanting to help, you're coming from a good place wanting to help, but you're mm-hmm. actually doing more harm. Right. And yeah. a, it, it's um that's when too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. Right, that makes sense. I mean, you don't want to 
uh, kind of add to their bad habits by aiding them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So if you help somebody too much, then they just kind of, you know, it becomes their self-fulfilling prophecy, I suppose, in a way. Yeah. You know, they just start living that, you know, used to somebody doing things for them instead of trying to take care of themselves. Right. Uh, and as yeah. you know, parents are, you know, jobs as moms, as dads, as parents is to to groom your children when they're young so that when they grow up, they're independent. Uh And she's not learning that. She's not learning to stand on her own two feet and be a woman, be a mother. And Uh I know, again, the mother's coming from a good place. She's wanting to help, but there comes a Uh I guess that's where tough love comes in, wouldn't it? Right, right, for sure. Yeah, I know I'm, you know, my mom, I would say my mom probably kind of fell into that area a little bit with us because, you know, she wasn't real uh, demanding for us to do chores and things. We always kind of expected her to pick up after us. And, yeah. you know, it's a whole other story now that I'm living on my own and married and have my own family. <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm not going to be like my mom. You know, I have two boys, but they're going to learn to clean up after themselves. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like I kind of learned to be the opposite of her now. Just because of that, you know, I felt like it was nice at the time. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Me, but in the end, you know, I I don't want my kids to be that way, you know, especially my son, because women today don't don't put up with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you know, because I don't I don't do that. My husband knows he he can't just leave a mess, and I have to take care of it. So yeah. And see, and yeah, their future not. wives will thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, you know, the way I want it. And I think it should be, you know. I just, I guess I'm not in the old-fashioned, you know, mindset on that just because of what I saw my mom do. And I felt like, you know, it was nice as a kid, but, you know, I don't want to, I don't want that as a wife and as, you know, a woman. And I wouldn't want that, you know, for any other woman. So my sons need to learn to do, you know, pick up after themselves. Yeah, so. because they're they're not always going to have a woman in their life. I, right, I, I they're going to live on their own at first, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and I mean I think that's one of the great things that my husband is also a good role model for my sons on because his mother I have to commend her, you know, my mother-in-law for teaching him to uh, pick up after himself because even though she did most of that stuff, somehow he picked it up that it needed to be done. And, uh, you know, he lived on his own, of course, before I married him. So he's really good about that. You know, it's not like I really have to get on him about it. <laughs> Sometimes he's getting on me more than I'm, I am on him, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. But, you know, I definitely think it's man's work. Women's work is man's work. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody's work, huh? <laughs> right, right. I'm, I, I'm definitely not, you know... Feminist or, or non-feminist in any area, <laughs> except for I don't know about taking the garbage out. I'm not I'm not too big on that myself. <laughs> I think that's men's work. <laughs> yeah, we, we can leave but, the stinky, smelly stuff to them. Yeah, I still think that stuff belongs to the men. <laughs> I'm sure, there's plenty of women who do it all, though. I'm just not super mom in those areas. <laughs> yeah, well, it gives him something to do too. You don't want to do everything. Right, yeah, you have to, you know, let them feel like they're still important and needed. You don't want to say, oh, I can do that. Yeah, you know, like work on your car, you know, let them do it. (laughs) I don't feel like getting greasy. (laughs) Yeah, those are their jobs, you know, let them find their strength in that. (laughs) There you go. Right, and I I don't need that strength. I don't need that area. Yeah, that'd be good. Go ahead. I was just going to say that's how you complement each other. You have your mm-hmm. strength, he has his, and you don't want to take that um, garbage taking out strength away from him. <laughs> right, right, that's his business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, him, let him develop that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's going to, you know, make a career out of it, but it's a good, good, good uh, strength for him to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, and, and definitely, I mean, he helps me around the house. He helps me with the kids. I mean, once he gets home, it's kind of my break time because I've been with him all day. So he gets home and pretty much takes over child care, you know, and spends some time with them. So he has some quality time with them. So, you know, I think that's important for fathers to have that involvement yeah. when they get home from work all day. Yeah, I mean, they say, oh, I've been working all day. I don't want to, you know, do this and that. But, you know, I'm glad that he appreciates that he has that time to 
spend with his kids and bond with them, you know, get them ready for bed and read them their stories and whatever. Oh, that's so. really good. Sounds like you have a very good husband. Yeah, he is. He is. It's sometimes hard to take hard not to take advantage of him. <laughs> so I always try and you know, I'm like, nah, that's still kinda of bad. Maybe I better do a little bit more for him. <laughs> Cause sometimes he's a little too giving, I think. But that's another show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like gosh, I need to give him a little more sometimes, but I don't know. I, after a whole day, I feel like after what I've been through, and he knows what I go through, he's like, I don't know how you do it. I'm glad I'm going to work. Because, <laughs> you know, on the weekends, like like during my mama's time out, so, you know, it's his time, and then, you know, after a couple hours, he's like, where are you? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you he know, knows I, what I, I really go have, through. I really have to commend him, though, because a lot of husbands and fathers, don't necessarily take that time. They don't really know their children. They don't spend uh-huh. time with them. And so right. that, that, hey, he has some qualities of an irresistible man. Yeah, an irresistible man, that's for sure. I mean, I don't know. I guess I saw that in him when I met him. So I yeah. said, yep, this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the one after five-year search. <laughs> yeah, that that's so. really good. Yeah, well, actually, it was a longer search than that, but from my previous relationship, I guess. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was almost a lifetime search. <laughs> but uh, but uh, to go on with uh, discussing the irresistible woman, um, what are some of the obstacles that they need to overcome to master this, be themselves? I, I think the first obstacle for most women comes in our thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if we do beat ourselves up or mm-hmm. uh, do that negative self-talk in our head, mm-hmm. and just we don't allow ourselves to be confident. And so I truly believe that the first obstacle we have to con- overcome is the negativity mm-hmm. and the choices we make. We have to make a choice that I'm not going to put myself down because I'm not going to allow anybody else to put me down either. I have mm-hmm. strengths. I have a purpose. I'm unique. I'm strong. I'm mm-hmm. confident. I'm bold. I'm all of these things. Even if you don't necessarily believe it at first, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you're, I know some women in the past they've had a husband who put them down and mm-hmm. made them feel useless and as mm-hmm. a terrible mom, a terrible wife. And mm-hmm. so now... It's like they have to build themselves up or mm-hmm. work with someone else, I guess, like me, <laughs> a mm-hmm. coach who can be that support because they don't have it anywhere else. Whatever right. you need to do to make the choice that I'm going to do whatever I need to do, change my thinking pattern, change my actions, even the way I stand, hold my head up when I walk instead of looking down. Because right. all of that all of that has to do, it's a reflection of your confidence or lack of confidence and I I really want every woman to be confident in who she is and that first obstacle it it starts in your mind and the choices Mm -hmm. that you're making I'm gonna I am confident and sometimes you just have to repeat that each morning (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know when Mm -hmm. you're looking at the strengths read them out loud hear them as if you're talking to yourself for Mm -hmm. uh, for example let's say you get up in the morning Patty and you say Patty, <laughs> you are confident. You mm-hmm. are encouraging. You're a joy to be around. So you're saying mm-hmm. it to yourself. If no mm-hmm. one else is going to say it, say it to yourself. And so that way you hear it and mm-hmm. believe that you are. And so, I, I, like I said, I think that's where the first obstacle comes in, just the thinking and making the choice. You're going to do what it takes, get the resources you need, the support you need, Take mm-hmm. the actions, the steps to be an irresistible woman, to be you, just to master that first principle, be you. Right. Right. And and some of the other steps that listeners can take to be irresistible? Uh, the next steps, actually, I, I'm teaching a course right now, and it's called mm-hmm. Every Woman Can Be an Irresistible Woman, and I'm mm-hmm. offering it for free. Oh, wow. Please. Yeah, the registration had closed, and what I did is I went in there and reopened it so your listeners can take part in it. It started last Wednesday. It's a four-week course, and it's not live. Mm-hmm. You can take it on your own schedule. There are uh, There's audio you can listen to, and there are even some 
coaching assignments just to kind of get mm-hmm. you. The first session we talk about being you and mm-hmm. being confident in I- identifying your strengths. So mm-hmm. if you go to the irresistiblewoman.com, and that's woman mm-hmm. with an A, and click mm-hmm. on the coaching and look at the teleclasses. And it's mm-hmm. at, not a teleclass, but you'll see it's right there. Every woman can be an irresistible woman pod class, May 2008. Mm-hmm. And it's a free course, and that really would be the next step. I'm not asking mm-hmm. for you to buy anything for me or mm-hmm. even to sign up for my coaching program, although you mm-hmm. can. But it's mm-hmm. a free course because I really want women to master this first irresistible woman principle because it's just foundational to anything else that they learn the rest of their lives to be mm-hmm. confident in who you are. Right. Well, that sounds like a great resource. I'll have to check that out myself. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. So uh, how do you support women entrepreneurs in, in achieving this goal to become an irresistible woman? With with women in business, I work with them specifically on their business relationships. And mm-hmm. right now I'm actually focusing on their in their online relationships uh-huh. so that through their website, the networking, articles, and blogs, and all of these different things that they can do. So at the website for women in business is www.irresistiblewomanentrepreneur.com. And oh, there okay. are free resources there as well. There, there's uh-huh. nothing you can purchase on that on that website right now. So you can uh-huh. go there, um, sign up for access to the free resources, and you can uh-huh. also access the link on the irresistiblewoman.com. There's a link on the left, Irresistible Woman Entrepreneur. And uh-huh. right now I'm working with a group of women with their um, 90 Days to an Irresistible Online Presence. So they're they're learning how to design a website in a very uh-huh. easy way and the elements that come into that, so that that's the foundation to their online presence, their online relationships, mm-hmm. is their website. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. We're, I'm working with them on that right now. And so that, is, that, is that a free coaching program, or is that one of your paid coaching programs, or how do they how do they uh, join that? <laughs> that is that is a paid coaching program. Okay. It it started two weeks ago, so it uh-huh. is at this particular moment it's closed. But if you sign up for the um, Irresistible Woman Entrepreneur on that site, you'll get notified probably in about two to three weeks it's going to reopen. And mm-hmm. uh, actually it could be up to a month. I want to make sure everything's fine-tuned and working correctly. Uh-huh. Uh, so you can go there. You'll get on the mailing list, and you'll be uh, up uh, uh, updated. I thought I was going to say the wrong word there. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be kept in the okay. loop on what I offer for women in business. Because I keep uh-huh. it separate. So that if someone's not interested in business, they just go to the irresistiblewoman.com. Right. In business, they can go over to irresistiblewomanentrepreneur.com, get all the business right. goodies. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Well, I didn't. I don't think I realized you had that page. I'll have to check that one out. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I got to learn about that from you. And then um, I know you have a special report. I I reviewed it. Um, I think a couple months ago on 20 tips on how to become an irresistible woman. And you talked about some of the four principles: be you, be an encourager, be a giver, and be a server. Um, do you have a favorite principle yourself? Yeah, it, uh, wow, several. I had to think about that for a second. The, yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite ones is being a giver because uh-huh. I think in society we're, well, the way the world's kind of going, we're taught to focus on ourselves as, as far uh-huh. as being selfish, and we want to, we don't want to be a giver. We want to be a getter. <laughs> uh-huh. We want to get uh-huh. everything we can. And so I think being a giver is, is one of my favorites. And mm-hmm. I think of uh, my dad's not obviously a woman, but I think of mm-hmm. something from my childhood that mm-hmm. that he used to do for me when I would come home from school. Sometimes I'd see a little package of cookies on my bed, uh-huh. and uh-huh. it it would cost less than a dollar, but uh-huh. it meant so much because it meant that during the day he was thinking about me. And uh-huh. that made me feel like a million bucks. So it cost them less than a dollar, took a few minutes at the store, and it had such an impact on me. I knew my dad cared about me. I knew he was thinking about me. And that's, I think that's one of my one of my favorite ones, aside, uh-huh. of course, being you. 
being yourself and being confident in who you are is just being a giver because I know how special it made me feel. And it still makes me feel when someone just does something out of the blue. Mm-hmm. I know how it feels, okay. but and I know that that's something that's not as prevalent in the world as it should be. And so I think that's right. one of my favorite ones because it really can, even if you just pick a flower and give it to somebody, it can make mm-hmm. their day because they're not used to somebody going out of their way to do something nice and thoughtful for them. So that that's one mm-hmm. of my favorite ones because I think we could we could really change the world. <laughs> just right, with, I, with I agree. Right, I agree with you on that. I think it's uh, definitely an important uh, principle and uh, characteristic to have to be a giver and something that, you know, a lot of us have to work on. I mean, I know it's something I need to work on more probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I try to give, but, you know, of course, now that I'm a mom, you tend to give more with your kids and mm-hmm. less to yourself sometimes, but then you still have those selfish moments that you want for yourself, and then you don't want to be giving all the time to your kids and your husband, but I don't know. Yeah, that's something I'd like to work on more, actually. Yeah. But and I don't know. Can I, can I add something else, too? Uh-huh. To that, that there are yeah. different ways to give. Uh, uh-huh. Some people really like gifts. Like I really appreciated that my dad purchased some cookies for me. Some uh-huh. people, what they crave and thrive on is somebody giving quality time to them. They right. just want you to take even 15 minutes and just spend time with them. Like like your like your husband spends time with your boys. Uh-huh. He may never know the impact that that may have on them because if they have a specific specific need and that's really a need that they have not everybody has the same um degree of need for for giving in this way but Uh that can make a difference if they if they don't have the quality time with their parent they could basically be starving for that attention another way to give is just is words of encouragement Uh being being an encourager so there Uh i just don't want anybody to think that you have to give literally a gift that you can hold in your hand, something physical. There are different mm-hmm. ways to give. It can be through your words, through your time, and mm-hmm. and just kind of see what's important to that to the person you're you're giving to. They'll give mm-hmm. you some hints through what they say, and right. even just asking, you know, what would right. you prefer? Would you prefer to receive this, or do you want to do this? So. Right. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. I mean, especially I know, yeah, with kids, I mean. They definitely appreciate your time more than probably a gift because, like, toys, my son, you know, he all plays with it for a little bit and then, you know, lost somewhere yeah. in the house. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, or he'd rather be outside playing in the mud and, you know, you know, throw, bringing you some mud pies or something. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what, those are some of his favorite pastimes rather than playing with his toys. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, I definitely can uh, agree with you on that. Quality time is definitely important to spend. And, you know, you definitely have to have that balance, though, because you need your own time, you need the time with them. So, exactly. And sometimes, especially for mothers, it's, it's hard to achieve all that. And, mm-hmm. and you feel like you're not, you know, giving or you're always being a server or, you know, you're not being you. You know, you're not filling all these other principles in. Yeah. So it's it's hard to keep a balance as a as a mother, I think, a lot of times. Yeah, Even though you may have strengths important. in each of those areas, yeah. So balancing it all out is a is the tricky thing. Any suggestions for uh mothers in that area? <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely pick one thing to work on. Like even for uh-huh. this week. If you're listening to this show right now, pick one thing that you want to work on whether it's identifying your strengths and really embracing them and and just come from that place of confidence knowing that you have strengths or maybe Mm -hmm. you want to be a giver to someone Mm -hmm. else or maybe you've been so focused on everybody else, which moms really fall into that, that Mm -hmm. you realize that an irresistible woman knows when to say no, Mm -hmm. not to take on something else, you need some time for yourself as well. And that I, that's nice. what I love about what you do, Patty, is you teach you teach women, mama's time mm-hmm. out. Take some mm-hmm. time out. It'll make you a better mother. It's not being selfish. It'll make you a better mother, even if it's 15 minutes in a day. Right. I would definitely right. encourage you to do that this week. Take some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and that's, you know, I have the social network to go with this, and hopefully more moms will, you know, 
find some more time for themselves and, you know, spend a little more time there getting to know each other yeah. and uh, interacting and more moms will join. And I think it's important, you know, if you don't, you know, get out and get get the opportunity to network, you know, in your real life, do it, you know, online because social networking is a big thing right now. No, totally. radio. There's the warning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I always forget they add that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, with social networking, it's important, you know, not only in your day-to-day life, but online, you know, when you're not able to get out. It's a great option, especially for mothers, i found. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So you definitely need to take some time out, even if it is 15 minutes a day that you spend online, you know, for yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I it's agree with you. And, uh, yeah. So it sounds like a great program that you have with the BU and Be Irresistible, and, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about it and more form- from you. I, I think I've joined uh, I've joined your newsletter, so. yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've joined uh, your networking group. You have a networking group as well. I can't, I haven't actually been there lately since I've had some home problems, but right. if you want to share that site with us, you can share that as well for how people can get a hold of you and, you know, your pro- find your products and services. Sure. Uh, the, the, the main site probably to refer you to is www.theirresistiblewoman.com, and mm-hmm. everything links to from there. You can find a special report that, that Patty referenced, uh, 20 tips on how to become an irresistible woman. And mm-hmm. I would encourage you to get it now. I'm going to be sending an, a message to my um, my online friends and subscribers because I'm going to be pulling that off of the website no. this week. So um, mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing something different. But so mm-hmm. I would really encourage everybody that wants it. It's been it's really making a difference for women. The stories I've been getting. It's helping women in their relationships with other women even. And mm-hmm. there have been, I've been able to identify some obstacles, but also it's been helping them in their business. I know a woman who went to a networking event and really applied the principles, and she walked out with, uh, I think, five leads for, wow. for new clients. Mm-hmm. So, wow, that's great. Yeah. yeah, very good. So, yeah, definitely grab that special report. It's very inexpensive, and it's going to be coming mm-hmm. off the market this week. So you can go to theirresistiblewoman.com. You can click on the store. The uh, social mm-hmm. support network you mentioned with is at www.iamanirresistiblewoman.com. Mm-hmm. And okay. I think that's it. I don't want to overload with websites. Yeah, you, yeah, you do have quite a few, and I'm sure you have them all linked up to the, yeah. the main one, the Irresistible Woman. So yeah. anybody who's interested in the entrepreneur program is, you know, that you have will will find it there as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's, Sounds like you've got a lot of stuff going on, and I, you know, I'm just always amazed at all the things that you're coming up with. And I'm going, wow, what's she up to now? <laughs> yeah, how does she find the time? I don't know. You don't, you don't have kids yet, do you? <laughs> I don't. That's why. <laughs> yeah, there, there's one reason. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, man, I wish I had that kind of time. <laughs> but you know, that's always another thing. I guess you know, if you're limited on time, you can't, you can't blame it on yourself, I guess, but. Um, it, it makes it hard sometimes to feel irresistible, I guess, for myself because I can't find the time to do all the things I want to do. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes so. we just have to, we definitely have to prioritize. But remember what we talked about in the beginning about identifying your strengths, and you, you heard a lot that you could identify with. You're, remember, mm-hmm. you're on your path to be an irresistible woman. Right, right. Oh, well, I'm working on it. <laughs> I wouldn't say <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how close I am, maybe 25%. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I've got a ways to go. It's probably going to be a constant work in progress here. It but, is. Uh, it's something we're yeah. always going to work on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, being perfect is not anyone's uh, – I don't think anyone's ever achieved that yet. I'm still looking for that person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, did you have uh, any special offers for the listeners today and future listeners? Or, um, you know, I know you mentioned the special report that that's going to be available for a limited time, so they want to get that now, you know, within this Mm -hmm. next week. But um, was there anything else that you wanted to mention as far as uh, special offers or anything else? Yeah, if you go to the irresistiblewoman.com on the right-hand side, 
you'll see a box where you can enter your name and email address. And you'll want to do that because you'll receive 20 tips that will help you become an irresistible woman. It's not the special report, but you will receive 20 tips. And mm -hmm. definitely you want to do that. Then you'll get updates from me. I send mm -hmm. out a tip every week, an irresistible mm -hmm. woman tip in, in a newsletter. So it will go right to your email inbox, keep you on track, uh, you'll, and you'll be kept informed because later this month I will be launching an irresistible woman makeover coaching system. Oh, that so you definitely, yeah, so you, I'm pretty excited about that. So you definitely want to be kept informed. Keep checking out the site and sign up and get all the free goodies on there you can. And there's free membership at theirresistiblewoman.com. Sign up for the free membership so you can access audio, video, articles, and all of all the tools that I have available to support you in being an irresistible woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, it's definitely a great resource for women to check out. So. Anyone who's listening and uh, tunes in later, you definitely want to go to her site, irresistiblewoman.com and theirresistiblewoman.com. So you have both of those, right? Make sure you go to theirresistiblewoman.com because if you don't, if you forget the the, you're not getting my site and you might not like what you see. So oh, so it's the irresistible. So you the don't have okay. So you don't have just irresistible. It's the. No. Okay. It's oh, the, yeah, okay. The I think I need to correct that on on the link I put here. Oops. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You yeah. might want to buy that one up just to you know just I to can't. be on the safe. There's thing. there's something there, but it's a, it it's oh. a, if you're looking for women, then that's where you go. So that's not yeah. the, that's not my website. Just put that disclaimer out there. That is not mine. Mine is yeah. the irresistiblewoman.com. Or if you're interested in the business, it's irresistiblewomanentrepreneur.com. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I run across the other one yet, but it's yeah, good to know. To. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably don't want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I, I right now I'm happy with the one I'm at. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so well, I really appreciate you uh, coming and uh, you know patiently uh, waiting to to. Uh, Come on! I know we scheduled this, uh, I guess, a couple months ago, and all these issues came up, and it was kind of up in the air if the show was going to go on or not. But I, I definitely wanted to make sure the show went on this week because it was just, you know, like I said, I hated to have to cancel two weeks ago, and you know, the show has to go on somehow. And thankfully, my sister offered, you know, time in her house. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, thank you, sister. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, so she'll have to listen in and. uh get all the tips, too, to become an irresistible woman, <laughs> which yeah. she's on her way to doing by helping me out today. That's so right. So I really do. Yeah, which I really appreciate. And she she is a giver as well, and sometimes sometimes she likes to just do her own thing, too. But, you know, she's got her good qualities just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, And I have some uh, recommended sites that I'm going to go ahead and share. And if you want to stay on the line, Christina, you can do that. Or if you have somewhere to be, um you know, I could say goodbye and let you go. And, yeah, I, you know, I'll get... yeah, I have an appointment I have to get to. But you okay. know, thank you very much for having me on the show, Patty. I enjoyed it. And I okay. hope that it does help your listeners feel irresistible. Go into this week okay. and be an irresistible woman. Okay. Well, Christina, thank you again for coming on the show, and hopefully we can have you back again. Yeah, that'd you know, be great. I really enjoyed talking with you. <laughs> I enjoyed it, too. Thanks, Patty. Yeah. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Okay, so um, you know, on the topic of being an irresistible woman, I kind of did a little research on some other sites. I mean, they may not be as good as Christina's site, but you know, I'd like to recommend some other sites to check out on uh, developing your confidence and self-esteem on your path to being irresistible. So there's one at the Confidence Clinic, which is a program for self-esteem and independence for women. And you can find that through the ERIC web portal, which is eric.ed.gov, which is a 12-week program, um, which they have some information on that. Then there's self-esteem and confidence links um, available through more-selfesteem.com. It uh, it's a training site for self-improvement, personal development, and uh, sporting use at mindtraining.net. And then uh, there's a book out called A Woman's Self-Esteem, Struggles and Triumphs. And uh, 
in identity, and uh, the author was, let me see who that was. I don't have that in front of me right now, but I'll have to. I'll, I'll be listing all of these on my blog later, um, hopefully by tomorrow, at littlebitesnews.blogspot.com, so you can check for the links there. And uh, so I'll get that information on who the author for the Women's Self-Esteem book is. And then there's the Career Center um, for EmployMoms.com. They have staffing for professional mothers and women who benefit through being coached through the entire process of career exploration to resume development to job reentry. So um, women who feel like they, are, they need help in those areas will want to check out that site as well. That was a great resource. And uh, finally, I believe that's all that we have. Um, I have for the resources right now in that area. If I find any more, I'll include them on the blog as well. But um, I appreciate you listening and tuning in. And you can always find our archives here at blogtalkradio.com slash littlebytesnews, um, which is affiliated with our parent resource site at littlebytesnews.com. And I wanted to go ahead and read a little bit about some of the future shows coming up. We have uh, in May... We will be speaking with Deb and April, who were previously scheduled to talk about April's law against child abuse um, through the Children's Advocate, trying to get a law passed against child abuse, which will help children um, who run into pedophiles online as well. So I'm looking forward to speaking with them finally, and uh, I do have to um, get reconfirmation on, on the May 18th date for that. So. Check back and join the newsletter to littlebitesnews.com to uh, keep up to date on our show times and site updates, source specials, and all of that good stuff. And then on June 8th, I'll be speaking with Lisa Smith from regionskids.com on teaching race and tolerance to children. And then on June 22nd, Melissa Nagin from about.com. She is also a lactation consultant and has her own private practice in New York. Um, she will be speaking with us on the busy mom syndrome, so you can get tips on staying balanced when trying to juggle life with a new baby, from breastfeeding to bottle feeding and everything in between. And again, Mama's Time Out is a live call-in support show for moms of all ages and stages, and you are welcome to call in to our call-in number at 646-595-4516 each week to interact with our guests and myself. And we are here live bi-weekly, unless otherwise posted, due to family commitments. It's a bi-weekly show now. So make sure you sign up to our newsletter to keep up to date on upcoming show schedule and set reminders here at blogtalkradio.com slash littlebitesnews for future shows. And, of course, if you'd like to be a a future guest speaker, submit your bio and an optional photo or logo along with your site, contact information, and topic of discussion idea to admin at mamastimeout.com with guest speaker in the subject field, and I will contact you to confirm a date for your live interview or uh, show topic. And then, of course, you're welcome to join our exclusive Mama's Time Out social network and take a Mama's Time Out, even if it's 15 minutes a day, to get to know some other moms and women in business. Mama's Time Out is a social network for moms of all stages and all ages as well. So join today um, through our newsletter. Um, you can also receive a free ebook with your membership and subscription to our newsletter. Get updates, coupons, and all that stuff, and as well as the show announcements. From the littlebitesnews.com website, our gift party supplies.com specials, and any advertising specials or other information that you'll want to check out. So Make sure you join the mamastimeout.com social network. Listen to us um, bi-weekly and join in the conversation with our guests. Uh, This will be a great way for all of us to connect and get to know one another better each week and uh, share your ideas um, that you would like to hear about on our show and any other comments that you want to share about motherhood and parenting. So thank you again for listening, and thank you to all our listeners and future listeners. Thank you to our special guest, Christina Wiley of TheIrresistibleWoman.com So make sure you check out her site and see all that she has to offer. I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Make sure you bookmark us and sign up for reminders for the upcoming airtimes as well. 
And then you can send comments, suggestions to our listener line, which could be played on the air on a future show at 602-457-2761. And uh, you can also just leave a message there if you need to be contacted. Leave your email address. Um, that is usually the best form of contact I have right now. So have a great week. Hope to see you here again next time for some Mama's Time Out.